Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Leading Change. My name is Emma, and I've got Bradley with me today, and we're going to be talking about the idea of a triple A customer. But before I get to all the questions that I've got for you, can you give everybody an introduction? Yeah, sure thing, Emma. Well, thanks for having me on the show. Um, so for those of you who I haven't had the pleasure to meet yet, my name is Bradley Adams. I'm a, one of the co-founders of Aerogami. And uh, what we're solving is how people save and interact with the policy documents on their phone. So our goal as a group is to make sure that when someone buys coverage, they know exactly who they need to call and they can get to those resources as quick as possible. Um, there's a lot of cool things we're doing and mobile experience, but we'll save that for our discussion, Emma. Sounds great. Well, thank you for joining me. And I teased this already. So now it's like time for the grand reveal. Um, we're going to be talking about this idea of a AAA customer. But I think before we dive into what that all means and kind of pertains to the entire conversation, can you give a definition to people of what we mean when we're saying that? Yeah. So we're certainly not talking about the membership or roadside assistance business. Um, that's for sure. Uh, but what we are talking about is those uh, users or customers who are just, just really in focus about getting the most out of your platform or product. So they're the people who follow the list, they follow the steps, they follow the process, they do everything in their power to maximize their use um, and the value they're getting out of your service. So if I was gonna think about a AAA customer, I think about almost the A student who does everything right, right? And that's the kind of personality that we're talking about when we think of a AAA user, Emma. So when we were having this conversation, I did the grand reveal of the fact that I am, in fact, not a AAA user for most things. And um, I think I fall into the category, again, of most of the general public. I was actually, though, toot my own horn. I was a, a straight A student. But once I graduated high school is when I stopped being quite so compliant with everything in life, I think. <laughs> um, so what happens when we start to design our solutions or our offerings with that AAA customer and only them in mind? What, what kinds of scenarios do we run into? Yeah, well, I think we miss out on a lot of the other people in the room, right? So it's easy to look at that core audience and say, oh, well, someone's doing it. Therefore, you know, it's enough, right? Um, and unfortunately, I think carriers kind of got stuck into developing channels around these AAA users, especially in the mobile experience market, um, because people thought, hey, if we build an app, they will come, right? And that will get those AAA users who are going to go through this experience. They're going to want to know what their coverage does for them. They're going to want to access their ID card, they're going to want to, you know, have a quick button to call their agent or to call for a claim. And the truth is, now that we have the data and we've seen how these mobile experiences have been built out, that most people aren't that customer. Most people aren't AAA users. They're not going to go through that full process and say, hey, let me download the app, set up the account and do everything I need to to maximize my uses of coverage. And so then what happens with carriers is you get into the zero and one mindset, where it's either there's one experience built for everyone and there's an experience built that everyone um, is, is missing out on. And unfortunately, we see that with policy document delivery, right? It's either you download the app and you get the full digital mobile experience that we hope for you, or you're stuck with this paper copy saved in your email as an attachment or that you have to print out and keep in your dashboard, um, which I think your story, Emma, about not being a AAA user was your husband putting that insurance card for your car on your hood to make sure that it ended up in your glove box. <laughs> So just to add context to that, after our initial conversation, I told him that I shared that with you. And he goes, don't lie. I've just started putting it into your glove box for you for the last couple of years. So I can't even make the claim that I take it from the hood of my car and put it into my glove box anymore. Yeah. Um, going back to, again, I am really not <laughs> the AAA customer um, when it comes to how I interact with, again, many of the services, insurance specifically um, in my life. But so I guess where I want to kind of like take the conversation is maybe offer some alternatives to people to kind of think through, like, what do we do to make sure that we're meeting everybody where they're at, as opposed to assuming that just because we've created it, they will come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's a, a valid point, Emma, because in many ways, we already think about that for so many parts of the business. So when we think about marketing, right? If someone said, hey, we're going to invest our entire marketing budget into just doing a postcard, you know, send out for the people in this local community that we want buying our coverage, everyone in the room would probably be like, that's crazy. Why would we, you know, just invest everything in this one, this one part of our marketing strategy 
when we probably want to be hitting them from a couple of different angles, right? We want to be able to give some marketing budget to the agency who's local and the agent that they're going to be connecting with, or maybe we want to run social media ads, or, you know, if you're a really big carrier, maybe you sponsor a Super Bowl commercial, right? And that's all part of this overall approach to make sure that when people are thinking insurance and thinking about this uh, very critical need for them, that they're thinking about your brand first. And I think the same could be said about this mobile experience element. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a lot of options for carriers. It's either you build a website or you build an app in terms of creating that mobile experience. But that's why we're so happy and we're we're very proud of what we built at Aerogami because in many ways we were creating this third option where we can say, hey, let's take that policy document that's serving as both a legal contract and a service component and turn that into the mobile experience that most customers could access with a scan of a QR code and save it right on their phone. So even though they might not be getting the full-fledged mobile app that might have really cool slick features um, that could help them save money on their driving behavior or um, maybe can give them geolocation information should they can get themselves in an accident, they at least have something there in their phone that they can access. So if they do need to use that coverage, they are a tap away from calling their agent, calling the carrier and getting the help that comes with that product. Well, thank you so much for joining me for the conversation. And for anybody that's not, make sure you make your way over to Bradley's LinkedIn, give him a follow, and certainly reach out to either one of us if you've got any questions about the conversation. But thank you again for joining me and for everybody for watching and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Leading Change. If you liked what you saw, be sure to subscribe and come back weekly for more expert interviews on digital transformation change management and emerging technologies.